First of all, we have to be a storyteller. Before you're an, before you're an author, you are a storyteller, then you're a writer, then you're author. I think we all have stories. Uh, come home from work and somebody says, how was your day? Well, now you're a storyteller. Um, now you write that down. You write that down, reread it, and add in what you need to change, see what you want to do, um, and then create. So now you've got the facts, but now you can add some fun to it. Um, and that's the, that's the joy of fiction. Fiction and then science fiction has wonderful joy because you can create anything. If it's in your head, put it on the piece of paper and then work with it. Um, writing and storytelling is joyful. You should not sit in and look at a blank page. You are full of stories. All of us are full of stories because we've lived and we've gotten to where we are. So write them down or go to a coffee shop and make a story up about any of the people you see. I like doing that. Um, creating a story based on just what you see in front of you uh, about that person. Or um, there's a, a, you can just give a first line. My husband will do that for me. He'll give me a first line and let me just go to town. And it can be so exciting um, which direction you're going to go. Nobody knows where you're going to go. So, yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. My guest today is very patient. Let's put that up front. Uh, technology is great when it works. And when it doesn't, it's not so great. And Renee has been waiting patiently for this to happen. She's here. We finally connected. I'm excited to have her on the podcast Renee Peek is here. She is, she's written a lot, a lot. And she's here to share her experience as an author. She's here to encourage you to continue writing, to start your journey as an author, and as well to share her most recent recent project with us. So Renee, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. Thank you for being patient. Glad to have you here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, David. Excellent. Tell everybody where you are in this great big world of ours, Renee. I am in the North Woods of Wisconsin. Oh, beautiful place. It is. Yeah. Is that born and raised there? No, uh, I'm born and raised in Minnesota. Okay. Uh, came to Wisconsin about 15 years ago uh, with my husband to retire. Yep. Nice. Excellent. Yep. Retirement sounds interesting. Um, how, what have you retired from? Didn't do you miss it? I miss it horribly. I was yeah. a teacher uh, for about 20 years, a vocational okay. teacher. Before that, I worked in the food service industry. And so I taught uh, cooking in a hotel uh, restaurant management to um, at-risk youth. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, a job that never, you never knew what was going to happen, which I enjoyed. It was always very exciting. Is the Do you have the ability, like a light switch, to shut teaching off, or is that always a part of you? Oh, my goodness. Um, the first few years were absolutely horrible because I looked at everything that I did as a teaching opportunity and how I could put it in the classroom. Uh, so that was very, very hard to uh, to put in the back of my mind. And I think that may have something to do with why writing was important to me to have my mind active and, and, and doing things like that. But um, it was everything I looked at was a teaching opportunity, uh, nature, ex especially. I did a lot of environmental education with the kids that I worked with. Good. Any thoughts down the road with all of this free time we kind of <laughs> imagine you have for maybe teaching other authors or helping people on their journey to write? I have I have recently found another author who wanted advice, and it I, it just flowed out of me, which yeah. was kind of frightening, I think, for him and for me both. But um, I've had a lot of experiences uh, in my writing journey, um, good and bad, um, and it's uh, a pleasure to be able to share that with other people and help them not uh, make the same mistakes or be prepared for what's going to happen. Uh, the more prepared you are for uh, the things that that occur when you're trying to publish uh, is very, very helpful. Um, you get you get knocked back a, a great deal. And it's very hard because it's your art. Um, you're bearing your soul basically when you when you put a book out there. So, yeah, you can you can get knocked down a lot. I'm just thinking, Renee, as people listen to our conversation, they're hearing your voice and through our conversation today, they're going to be like, I really like something, something about Renee that I feel I'm attracted to or resonate with as a fellow author. And I know I would love to just have time with her to 
talk about my craft and how I can get better. And maybe she can help me learn to be a better writer because I'm new at this. I've been writing for a week and you've been writing a lot longer than I have. So you just know things. So I just think as a teacher, again, I don't think you can shut that off to the no. same degree as other people might be able to shut off a different career where they can just yep. turn and walk away from it. I think that's in you. So would you ever be open to somebody who listens to the show going, Renee, I'd love to just spend like half an hour with you and, and just learn from you. Would you be open to that? I would more than be open to that. I would relish that. That would be wonderful. And if anyone wants to contact me, uh, I have a website, ReneeWPeak.com, that they can contact me. And I'd be more than happy to share anything I can. I'm no expert, but I am experienced. Um, and so I can share that. And uh, I do like to share that with people. And I, and I want I want so much for people to be successful in, uh, in their art, whatever it might be. People in again, when you bury your soul, you're, you're sharing something that is so personal. Um, it, it, it can be very hard and you need support. You definitely need support. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have a lot of knowledge and experience. I, I smile when I hear my guest authors come on and say, well, Dave, I'm no expert. Well, <laughs> first of all, I've never written anything. So to me, you're an expert. I have listeners who haven't written anything and I have readers who have never written anything. So the only person in this entire conversation who has written anything is you. That would make you technically an expert because you've done something that we all haven't done. So we're looking at you going, Renee, with the amount of things you've written and how active you are and who you are as a person. I'm defaulting to expert whether or not you want to uh, accept that title. I still... I look, I look up to you. I admire you for all the things you've done. So, Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's excellent. So we talk about the fact that you've written a lot. Tell us, can you give us like a, a big overview, 30,000 foot view? How many books and things have you written in the past? Um, I think we're now at about 39 or 40 books. Uh, I just finished the the series that we want to talk about. I just finished yeah. that at thirty five books, and I, I I had to end it. I didn't want to, but I needed uh, I needed to. It was uh, becoming I was becoming obsessed with my character, so I needed to end that. And that was that was that was teary. That was very teary for me. Um, but I started with a children's book and then did uh, a memoir. Um, I and that's how I got started. Really, is uh, I I did a blog. Um, my husband and I have uh, had unique adventures. We always have unique adventures when we do anything. It always turns humorous. And so I would just send out those kind of things. And somebody said, put it in a book. So I did. I put it in a, in a memoir. Um, and then after that, the ideas just kept coming of, of, of uh, uh, the next was a, a novel about um, how uh Older people are treated sometimes dismissed because of their age. And so it was a little bit about that. Stop dismissing people just because of the packaging you see them in. Mm. Um, so to try and get people to see beyond uh, packaging to into into who that person was. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. So talk about the most recent project then. Book one is done, I believe, of the series. And how many books are in the series? There are like I said, there are 35. That 35th book was the one that finished. Okay. Um, I have now, through book seven, uh, self-published. I, I call it self-published. I work with a publisher, um, Book Locker, who is, they are angels. They are truly mm -hmm. angels for people who don't understand computers and things like that. They are amazing. It's a very small company. Uh, if you have a question, you talk to the owner directly. It's... Uh, they work with you. Uh, they help you get the cover. They help you get your ISBN. They help you get all the things that you need to get to have uh, your books listed for sale. Um, absolutely wonderful people. And I have the first seven out now with them. So that would be a great contact to share with our audience, oh, uh, Renee. Okay. So, yes. And if you have a contact there that would like to come on my show and talk about what they do for authors, I have so many authors asking questions of the show. I don't have the I don't have the resources to point it's, them in the right direction. So I'd yeah, love to connect I, and with I them. will do that. Angela is absolutely amazing and the, the company is Book Locker and okay. they are just they're saints. They okay. are we'll put a link to Book Locker in the notes for today and Thank maybe you. there'll be an opportunity to have them on the show in the future. I'd love to connect with them as well. Super. 
Excellent. So tell us about what the most recent book is about. Uh, what are we going to find in there? And I just kind of like, I'm trying to connect a reader to you to fall in love with their next favorite author. It sounds like there's a lot that you have to offer to and our new reader to your world. So um, can you tell us about your most recent project? Um, Hope for a New World is uh, the first book in the series. And I, I didn't intend it to be a series when I started it. So it it, it can be a standalone book. Um, it is based in a couple of things. And the first is the belief that the the earth is sentient, uh, a sentient being named Gaia. And there are people who are able to sense that and speak to the world. And, and I think that's, I believe that that's always existed, that we have shamans and people who are attuned to that and can speak to the earth. And I took that a step further in the book and thought, since we believe that the earth is sentient, then other planets must be as well, and they can communicate. And so that's part of the book is that uh, multiple planets can communicate with people if they're uh, in tuned and can listen. The other is that um, the Hopi, Hopi belief that uh, the earth is in its um, fourth iteration and the fifth world is coming. And there are, are nine prophecies that tell of this coming and eight of them have been realized. And that's in truth and actuality in our, in, in our lives. And uh, there is just one left uh, before the earth will cleanse itself and begin again. Um, and it's, you know, we've kind of done some things to make it want to do that. So that um, it, it's about saving the earth or about uh, being there for the rebirth. Um, it, the book fits into sci- sci-fi because planets are involved. Uh, a little bit of space travel is involved, but it, it's more, um, uh, it's got a lot of fantasy in it as well. In, in as far as there are healers and things like that uh, and people who are able to communicate with the planet. You talked at the beginning about your relationship with your characters. Talk about that a little bit more. Like, as an author, uh, I would think you're kind of writing from a distance about this these characters, imagining them. But then there's a relationship that builds over time as you craft these books and share these stories. You get a relationship with these characters, and they become very real to you. Kind of explain a little bit more about your relationship with your characters. As soon as I put a name on a page, there's a face to go with it. And once there's a face to go with it, that character is real. Um, And I'm writing not about them. I'm writing for them. Mm -hmm. I am taking their lives and writing it on the page. It's, it's, It's really hard to describe how real my characters are to me. But that's, that's what caused me to write uh, the long series. Because their lives don't end at the end of the book. These are characters that I've come to know, love, and appreciate. And so they continue on. Their lives continue on. The books are are mostly dialogue. So it is mostly about their relationship to each other, to the world, and to the situations that uh, I create for them. So I create a situation, and then I write how they react to it. Are you directing your characters or do sometimes the characters direct you as the author? And the characters direct me mm. uh, more often than, than I would have ever anticipated. The intent for the first book was very different than the direction it went. Um, it just grows and grows. And it's, it's, I'm actually shocked often because something happens later in the book that there was foreshadowing for in the, earlier in the book that I didn't know. I was not unaware that I was foreshadowing something that was going to happen and it happens and I look at it and it just amazes me. So my characters kind of run a lot of it. Um, And they're, yeah, they're alive. They're alive. They have lives. And so their interactions um, uh, have a life of their own. What's some, what's an example of your character talking to you? They helped you and gave you direction as you're writing. Can you give us like a little, Just an example of how you hear from your characters. Well, later in the series, I added a character because I needed to get a message from one place to another. That was the only thing that character needed to do. Absolutely the only thing that character needed to do. But once I put her name on the page, 
Um, and once I gave her form, um, the next two books she featured very highly in. So she <laughs> took off. She just took off as being powerful and strong and funny. All of that just happened. Uh, she kept interacting. I kept bringing this person back to interact because they knew each other. I, you know, so-and-so knew each other. So they direct sometimes, and I have no idea. In the in Hope for a New World, um, one of the characters uh, I figured was a mom. And so I gave her a daughter um, who I just thought would be a name. And she carried through the whole series. She carried through the whole series and was featured very prominently, actually, in the first book. So uh, I never know where they're going to go. So if you were able to pick one of the characters that you are most curious about from your writings and then sit down with them and have like a well, one-on-one -on -one with them and you were able to ask them a question you don't know the answer to, what would that character be and what's your question for them? Um, it w probably would be my main character, Madison Bearsheart. And it would be, I, I want to know her relationship with her with her parents. Um, we see, we learn a little bit about she and her mom, but I'd want to know a little bit more about about her and uh, and her life. There's a little bit in it, but I don't. I, I actually sat back and looked and thought, I don't know her mom and dad, and I want to know her mom and dad. That sounds like another book. No, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm like, oh no, here we go. We just did another one. Um, so, okay, yeah. how, where, where are you drawing from? There must be a very deep well for you to draw from, to write this many books. Like I find a lot of authors I talk to are just struggling on the first one or two books to come up with depth of character and story plot and, and all that. You just seem to have this very deep well. Who dug your well? Like, how did you, where did you get this from? I'm going to say my students, I'm going to say teaching did that, um, I learned a lot uh, from from everyone that I meet. I mean, we all have a lot of people in our lives, but um, thought processes uh, of of my students was always different. That taught me to look at the world differently. Um, just giving information to a student doesn't mean they're going to pick it up. Um, you have to find out what their way of learning is, their way of hearing it, their way of of getting it in their head, and so then I can look at everything differently. The whole world is different then. Um, it's, there are no rules anymore. Um, so I think it's all of the students that I've, I've met and, and I, I taught evening classes to people, so adults, um, it's very different, very different. So being able to look at the world, not as uh, an individual, but as everybody might look at the world. What else have you been able to pull out of your teacher's tool toolbox that has helped you as an author to keep writing or develop your characters? What, what kind of tools are you leaning on? Um, that's a that's a really good question. I, I think it's uh, being able to write the dialogue. I think that uh, being able to constantly be talking it. My books are dialogue. They're just, they're, it's character driven. So like in a classroom, the students drive, drive the class. I mean, the teacher really doesn't. You can kind of push and nudge, but um, the students drive what you need to do. And for me, the, the voices, the voices of my characters drive what happens. It's interesting because I've heard people say to teach, you need to know just a little bit more than everyone assembled in the classroom. You just need to have a little be just slightly ahead of everyone else and then you can teach. Um, you're far beyond that. You're you're teaching and, pre and presenting in a way that's very engaging. So if you were to assemble a classroom of, of new authors as students and you're up front teaching and instructing, you do know more than everyone. So again, I'm leaning back to the expert <laughs> title for you. Um, I'm giving you that title anyway. Uh, you're up there in front of a classroom of new authors eager to learn how to to write and share their story. Give us a give us an overview. What would your lesson be today that you would love to put in front of a class full of new authors? Um, I, I guess I would say, first of all, we have to be a storyteller before you're in, before you're an author. You are a storyteller, then you're a writer, then you're author. I think we all have stories. 
uh, come home from work and somebody says, how was your day? Well, right. now you're a storyteller. Um, now you write that down. You write that down, reread it, and add in what you need to change, see what you want to do, um, and then create. So now you've got the facts, but now you can add some fun to it. Um, and that's the, that's the joy of fiction. Fiction and then science fiction has wonderful joy because you can create anything. If it's in your head, put it on the piece of paper and then work with it. Um, writing and storytelling is joyful. You should not sit in and look at a blank page. You are full of stories. All of us are full of stories because we've lived and we've gotten to where we are. So write them down or go to a coffee shop and make a story up about any of the people you see. I like doing that. Um, creating a story based on just what you see in front of you uh, about that person. Or um, there's a, uh, you can just give a first line. My husband will do that for me. He'll give me a first line and let me just go to town. And it can be so exciting um, which direction you're going to go. Nobody knows where you're going to go. So, yeah. That's a, that's funny because when my young my wife and I were married young young in our marriage some of the things we do for fun we'd be like well let's just tell the story I'll start and then you tag in and we'll just see where the story goes and we just like we had no money we couldn't go out to the movies we couldn't do anything so let's just do this and we would like go back and forth and we create this world and we had no idea what the next person was going to say kind of improv I guess in the moment yep. but it was yeah. the most fun memorable I'm thinking of it now and it's thirty years ago that's like. A really cool little trick to kind of just put something out there. I've seen people use like a word generator and it just yep. generates a word and off you go. Talk about the word. Yep. Um, when I think of story, Renee, I think what when is when does a story become a story? And I think it becomes a story becomes a story when it's either spoken or written. Other up to that point, it's an idea or a concept. Yep. The story actually becomes a story when it's shared. Would you agree with that? I would, I would definitely agree with that. All these things can live in your head, but once you get them out and share them, then it takes a life of its own as well, because hearing it and saying it can be two very different things. So it can start a whole nother, a whole nother track of stories for the person who heard it. They could take that and go who knows where with it. I've heard of authors saying they've painted themselves into a corner in their story and like a wet floor. <laughs> they're like, their back is against the wall. They're in the corner of the room and they can't get out because the floor is wet. And they're like, oh no, now what do I do? But fiction and science fiction, you can just, the wall can become a door to another world. And there you go. Like you can, you can go anywhere, right? That's the, yes, you, you can. Yes, you right? can. Have you ever leveraged that yourself? Well, I've, I've created problems for myself where <laughs> I need, I need to get people in a place where they're not. So they had a scene going over here and I need them all over here. And I have no idea how to get them there. So, um, yes, sometimes you do create uh, uh, create ways through science fiction that, that will help you. But those are frustrating. Um, my <laughs> characters tend to be all over the place and I need them all here because we need to do this. And so. Those are the those are the things that stop me, and I need to take a really long walk to see if I can figure that out. I can imagine you again, classroom setting. All of your characters sitting in tiny desks. Some of them don't fit because they're so big, <laughs> and you up there trying to go. Okay, everybody, I'm trying to get this book done. Can you all just work together? Like, hey, where's so and so? Oh, they're not here. Of course, they're not here. They never show up for anything, right? So I can exactly just picture right. you trying to herd cats, trying to get yes, this book done. Herding cats. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very tell good. Us, tell us, Renee, who is your target audience? Who would really enjoy this book? I want the listeners to go, A, this book is for me, or B, I know someone that's going to fall in love with your book. Tell us who the, who's your ideal reader. And that that's a wonderful question. And it's one that's befuddled me since I finished <laughs> the first book. My husband keeps saying, no, you need to know, you need to know. And what I can tell you is all of us have met at some point in our life people who are uh, who just knock us back with how kind they are and hardworking they are and focused and and always wanting to do the right thing. And that's who the book is about. And so it's for anyone who believes that's possible, anyone who who likes those people, anyone who wants to be more like those people, anyone who 
who is who believes we can do anything if we work together, that we're all joined, we're, the, we're part of the fabric of life. It's that hopeful belief that we're stronger together. And that's who it's for. It's for anyone who wants to um, jump into a world where that happens. Um, bad things happen, of course, but um, good people will always join together and fix it. And I, I guess that's who it's for. Anybody who believes and hopeful is hopeful enough that they know that it, it can work. Um, it tends to be, my people tend to be strong women. And I think that comes from the generation I was born into where women um, weren't expected to go to college because that would be a waste of money mm. and, and where women weren't allowed. But my, my women prove that that's not true. Women are strong. Sisters are strong, especially when they stand together. Good. Uh, without any spoilers, obviously, because we're going to be buying the books. Um, where, what gives you satisfaction as an author when you look to the reader, knowing that they're going to pull open your book and start reading? How do you measure satisfaction that you you met your goal as an author? Um, it's, it's comments about the book. Uh, one woman said, you made me want to go out and join an environmental organization and fix everything. So to drive people to, to make a change or, or put the book into their, who they are, um, to be able to cry with my characters, um, to be able to laugh with my characters, um, that when they, when people have spoken of them, to use the names like their friends that they've met and that they know. And that's what um, that's what makes me happy about my books. I'm I'm already and I can already anticipate the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> so see if I'm right. Maybe I'm not. But what is the underlying thread that ties your writing together? Um, is there a kind of a universal big idea or purpose to what you do from book to book to book, and from every time you sit down to write? Is there this underlying? thread for you that kind of ties everything together? Thank you for saying thread, because I believe we're all threads, and I believe that we're all woven together, and that we live and die together. So when one of us is weak, if we don't help that strengthen that one, the whole fabric becomes weaker. And so as the books move forward, there are all of these threads that we try and strengthen, making sure people be can become the people they're meant to be, that we stop knocking people down that uh, we understand language and culture is is vitally important, that we know the healing power of music, the healing power of things beyond medicines, that we understand that um, <clears throat> all of us live and die with all of us. One thing I saw recently was there's, um, my wife and I love doing things with repurposing things and saving things from the landfill. And we're very environmentally focused. That's something that's very important to us. Um, we create a little business around it, but one of the people, one of the people that we met through that is a person in Eastern Canada. And they, what they do is they take like clothing, like old sweaters, they totally take them apart and then make something new out of them. So if somebody didn't want this item in its current form, they take it all apart. They're pulling the thread, as you're doing in your writing. They pull the thread until it becomes this big ball of yarn or whatever, and then they make something new. And then that new thing is now desired. People want it. People will pay money for it. They've taken something that was like an old story. They pulled all the threads out of it and then rewrote it into a new, new context, and it becomes desirable. That's what I'm getting from you is there's this thread around environmentalism, the yeah. planet, I'm picking up on things from you as you talk, and these seem to be key things for you. Why are those things so important to you? Because I guess I've lived enough. I've I've seen things that uh, I want to change. Um, as far as people becoming who they're meant to be, I've seen too often um, comments that knock people back or or keep them from um, being who they're meant to be. They they tell them that they're not good enough, that they can't do anything. And that person may have been the one who saves us all in the future. We need to stop being better than people and realize that we're all the same. Um, the more people that you knock down, the more people that are at your heels pulling you down, the more people you lift up, more hands will be there when you need to be lifted up. Mm. 
I've used this quote in other contexts, but I think it re relates to you as well, Renee. It's all the idea around an apple and that you can cut open an apple and you can pick out all the apple seeds and put them on the desk and you can count how many seeds are in an apple. But the one thing you can't do is you can't count how, how many apples are in one particular seed. Yeah. Right. So as a writer putting out your stuff into the world, you don't know from one seed of an idea the impact it's going to have on the world, right? You don't know what people are going to do with your idea as you put it out into the world. People may accept it, people may not, but somebody might be inspired. And that inspiration could then lead to more inspiration in someone's new journey because you were brave enough to share your words. I have a lot of authors who I speak to and they feel like, Renee, nobody cares what I have to say. No one's oh. going to read my book. Like, why would I even try? I've had this manuscript in a desk drawer for years, and it just keeps eating at me that I should release this or put it out in the world. But who cares what I have to say? I'm just a teacher. I'm a plumber. I'm a dad. I'm a mom. I'm a whatever. Fill in the blank. Nobody cares. I'm not professional. Like, who cares? But somebody does, right? It, you have to. It, it, that's the that's the thing that's very difficult. Um, I I live in a small town, and so I believe success for for an author is having your your books in a library, um, being able to go to a library and having your book there. I think that's success. So we have a lot of small little libraries in the small towns in the area, and so my husband and I went and dropped them off, and and some of them some of the librarians were just so wonderful and so exciting gave me energy to believe that actually, yes, I am an author. I really do know <laughs> something and this is true. Um, but one of them kind of threw the book on the on the counter and she said, these are just going to sit on my shelf because you know you're nobody. And oh. my uh, learned response was, yeah, you're right. I, and and it knocked me, it knocked me back. It knocked me back really hard. Um, and that's what authors will see often, more often than the ones who say, yes, this is wonderful. So you, you'll feel that a lot. Um, and I, you can say, you know, you need a thicker skin. No, it, it's it's your art. And for me, it's my characters. So um, it's my job to get my characters out there and get my ideas out there. So uh, it knocked me back. Um, you're nobody. But I, I keep hearing her say that. And, and I realized that I'm just somebody that nobody knows. Um, and they don't need to know me, but they need to know my characters. And that's my job to have people know my characters and and want to want to read about them. So let's go back to your initial comment at the beginning that you're no expert. Mm, I challenge <laughs> that in this moment, hearing that story of that librarian. Yeah. I challenge that for you, Renee. I think I think you have something amazing for this world and I think it's it, if people could have time with you and just hear your stories and and listen to your teacher's heart helping people, I just think there's so many good things ahead of you. Again, the seed thing, right? In the apple. You yep. don't know. You don't know the impact you're going to have on someone, right? And you never do. And in teaching, it was the same way. Um, you you never know what student you reach. You never know what moment they figured out yeah. who they were and what they wanted to do. Um, so you every day you just had to do your very best and hope that someday, um, somewhere down the road that they'll go, yeah, I, I can do this and I, I am okay. Very inspiring talking to you, Renee. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is one of many conversations that we need to have. Like, I just feel like we've kind of circled the airport, but we haven't landed yet. <laughs> you know, it's like there's so much that we could talk about. And you're just the amount of the amount of sheer volume of what you've written. One podcast episode doesn't doesn't cut it. We definitely have to have you back in the future. So I would I love to open to that. Yeah. OK, good. I'd love yep. to. Yeah. Good. So before we wrap up, Renee, because, again, technology was our enemy before we got started today. But <laughs> again, you're a very patient person. So thank you for that. Um, take us back to the website again. What what are we going to see when we arrive? Is there somewhere we should start on your website so we know where to, to begin? And maybe as well for a brand new reader, first time hearing your voice, meeting you, where's our starting point to know more about you and where should we start reading? Um, 
the the website has some little trailers about the books. So I always like that music music and imagery can help set the set the mind do the mindset for you for the books. And that's on the front page. There's a couple of stories about me. And again, uh, because my very many of my characters are um, indigenous from indigenous populations, there's a little uh, explanation about that and why I think that I, I'm okay to write for for characters like that. Um, uh, a little blog just to so people can understand what my life is like here with the goats and the bears and the all of those kind of things. Um, but uh, they can contact me through the website um, reneewpeak.com. And I, I'm I like I am more than happy to share anything I can to help people get themselves in a good place to get their books uh, where they want. If they want them uh, with a publisher, they want to self-publish or try and get hold of an agent or any of those things. And I can share some of the horror stories of uh, the the failings that I've I've had through my journey and uh, warn them about the the. Uh, people who will be out there trying to to steal their money as well. Uh, the publishing industry is is uh, a little bit frightening, a little bit frightening. But there are so many resources and so many people who want to help and share their stories, and I can help people connect with that. So Excellent. I would like to do that. Yep. Usually, I end off with one last question here at the end, but I actually have a two part question. First, again, let's re- let's remind everybody about uh, Book Locker, and you mentioned Angela. Any kind of comments or words that you like to leave for Angela as she listens to this podcast and here's you mention book locker what would you like to say to Angela specifically I, and her team? I have always told Angela that that they're wonderful they're kind um I am not good with technology and um they're all of their people Brian and Allie and Todd all of them will help you through all of these things and they know that you're going to make mistakes um and they no one gets angry or, or frustrated with you. They just do what they can to help. They actually bend over backwards to help you feel that you're cared for. Um, and if you have any questions, they are answered immediately. So Angela is she's she's an angel. All of them are wonderful and and good good people. Excellent. Again, we'll have links for all that in the show notes. My last question for you, Renee, before I let you go. Thank you again for your time today. I really, I, I love talking to you. This is fun. Um, my podcast is called Living the Next Chapter, so I've got to ask, shameless plug for my own podcast, <laughs> see how I'm doing this. Uh, how, how are you living your next chapter? What's next for you? Writing is going to be a big part of it. I don't know if there's going to, I, I just finished, a, like I said, a fantasy book, and I don't know if I'm going to go off on a tangent with that. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I I know that writing has to be a part of it because I love it. I absolutely love it. And it involves uh, me all the time. So like I said, out walking the dog, and I'm always looking for another story to tell. Wrap us up, Renee, with a quote or a mantra, something that keeps you motivated. Maybe it's somewhere near your computer screen or on your refrigerator, something that you just kind of go to. That's your thing. That's your that's your saying. That's what people know you for or what inspires you. Is there like a closing thought for us? Well, with my books, they're all about hope. And uh, I use the word indeed a great deal. So for me, it's just hope indeed. Mm, I love it. That'll end up in the title. Thank you so much, <laughs> Renee. Thank you so <laughs> Thank for you. being part of this today. And again, I was I was really uh, hoping you would say yes, but thank you for the coming back in the future. I'd love to have you back again as a guest. That's great. That's great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Excellent, everyone. All the information is always in the show notes, including the links to Book Locker and Angela and her team. Again, thank you so much, Renee, for being part of the show. Thank you. Hey, thanks for being here for the Living the Next Chapter podcast. So glad to have you as part of our family of listeners. There's a seat for you just here on Living the Next Chapter, and I'm so happy that you have listened to all the way to the end. Wow, you are now my new bestie. I want to let you know that I host seven other podcasts on top of Living the Next Chapter. Yep, eight total. One of them is called the How To Podcast Series. If you are thinking, you know what, Dave, this podcast thing seems like a lot of fun. Well, I'll give you a secret. It is. 
it's a great, amazing, fun time where you can get to meet great people, get your word out there, promote your book, promote what your coaching program, whatever you're doing. Podcasting is great. And if you want to learn how to do this, what you're hearing right now, head over to howtopodcast.ca and look up the How to Podcast series on YouTube, whatever app you're listening on, you'll find me there. And I'd love for you to come listen to How to Do This. And if you're interested and have questions on how to podcast, reach out to me at howtopodcast.ca. Thank you for listening. Talk soon.